baby duties, not duties, duties. I mean like responsibility and whatnot. What's the proper workload split when you have a stay-at-home mother and a dad that's working full-time? Who has to do what, when, and why? Let's talk about it. G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn of the barbie, and get ready for some spicy content. Let's go. Am I the a-hole for asking my significant other to take the baby with her when she leaves the room in the middle of the night? So I have to wake up at 5 to 6 a.m. every weekday for work. My significant other is a stay-at-home mother. Approximately once a night, she gets up at around 2 or 3 a.m. She hasn't actually gone to sleep yet, she's just watching TV and getting ready to go to sleep, to go to the restroom, or to put clothes in the dryer, etc. Our five-month-old baby immediately wakes up and starts screaming as soon as my significant other leaves the room. Most nights I spend 10 to 20 minutes woken up in the middle of the night trying to get our baby to stop crying, but she never does until my significant other comes back. I can't fall asleep easily, and I take 30 minutes to an hour to fall back asleep. I've asked her to take the baby with her and put her in her baby swing or something so that I don't wake up. My significant other says that she shouldn't have to do that and I should wake up. If the roles were reversed, I would do that for her. But she says, that isn't the point, and you shouldn't mind having to wake up, and she should be able to do something without having to bring the baby with her. I told her that I think it's selfish to make me wake up just because I shouldn't mind waking up. When I'm not at work, I help take care of all of our children and will give her breaks from the baby. It's not that I'm lazy or don't want to be with my baby, but having to spend every workday tired just because I have to, in my opinion, wake up for no reason, just doesn't seem fair to me. Am I the a-hole? Edit, my other children are 7 and 5. Many have asked why she's doing the laundry in the middle of the night, and a lot of these times she starts a load of laundry and forgets to or delays putting it into the dryer, then when she wakes up in the middle of the night, she decides to do it then. Yes, I do help with laundry and cleaning and dishes. Why don't you sleep in a different room? My significant other doesn't like it when I sleep in a different room and gets angry. Why don't you wear earplugs? Great idea. I'm going to try that. Also, my significant other is more nocturnal than me and doesn't sleep until 3 to 4 a.m. because she wakes up later in the day than I do. I do wake up with the baby and try to soothe her until my wife comes back. I don't refuse, and I just go back to sleep. I occasionally ask my wife why she won't take the baby to another room, though. Edit, edit, I'm going to discuss getting on similar sleep schedules with my wife and do more around the house. I'm going to go for a bit of a spicy one and say not the a-hole, as this seems like a co-sleeping problem. It seems to be that the baby gets agitated and angry every time one of you leaves the bed, and that's probably a habit you need to start weaning them off of. It's obviously not the baby's fault, this is just a bad habit, and this bad habit has caused uh, arguments and fights with you and your wife when it should be solved by slowly weaning the baby into a crib, into its own room. This doesn't have to end with you sleeping in a different room, it just means the baby has to sleep somewhere else and be comfortable with sleeping by itself. From your edits, it does seem like you guys both do your fair share of labor around the house. This is just one issue that's making you not able to sleep. And I'm sure that she's not able to sleep properly either in this one and it's causing you guys to stress, freak out, uh, as parents do. I don't think it's right to pit stay-at-home mothers against working parents. It's always a bit too hard since we're not in that situation. So I guess I don't know enough about you guys, and I'm just going to go with no a-holes here instead of not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Cinderella Ridvin says, I'm going to risk the downvotes and say not the a-hole. You have a valid need for sleep in the wee hours of the morning, given your early work hours, and you don't seem to be shoving off all the work on your wife, contrary to how other commenters are reading the situation. It is, however, very uncool to let the baby wake your sleeping spouse if you're awake. That's weird and inconsiderate, and I would absolutely say the same thing if it was OP disturbing the baby while his wife was sleeping. It seems like the real problem here is your wife's midnight rising. What's going on with that? And why does her waking up wake the baby up? 
Do you bed share, or is she slamming the door and turning on the lights? I'm not sure it's reasonable for her to have to drag the baby along with her to the bathroom or just wherever. The need for solitude is powerful with a baby in the house. It would be better either to have her not going on midnight expeditions or to have the baby be able to sleep through it. And OP replies, We bed share, but after going through these comments and PMs, we've decided that it's time to wean the baby off of night feeding and have her start sleeping in her crib. R. Baltimore says, My son's sleeping schedule got set in the NICU, so he was waking up every two hours to feed. Because he was bottle fed, my husband and I took turns every time he woke up so we could each get four straight hours of uninterrupted sleep. Even when my son's eating patterns widened, we still took turns with each waking. This is parenting, and it's especially important when you have a high needs and clingy baby, which it sounds like you do. And for God's sakes, do the laundry for her. And OP replies, she doesn't exclusively do the laundry or anything else. We actually have agreements where I do certain things and she does others, but we both willingly overlap and do each other's chores as well. Shamanda says, You're the a-hole. Ever think your wife needs sleep too and is tired? You both had children and a baby and kids is a full-time job and a bloody hard one. I've done both working full-time and a full-time stay-at-home mother. I'll take the full-time job any day. These kids can be killers, lol. Maybe your child needs to develop a better bond with you to be happy, to soothe to you as well. I don't mean this with offence at all. A baby bonds to mum very tightly, or whoever is the primary caregiver of baby, whether it be mum or dad, or even nan and pop. My partner and I slowly worked with our daughter, 10 months, to have a greater attachment to him because she was so dependent on me after medical issues early in life, and me being the mum caregiver when he worked. It's hard, and you may have some sleepless and crappy nights, but it's worth it. And OP replies, I don't take this offensively, and thank you for the advice. And Rhinoki says, not the a-hole. It's pretty rude of her to leave like that knowing the little one is going to wake up, and in turn, wake you up. I also have issues falling and staying asleep, and I recently bought a big jar of melatonin gummies, and not only do I fall asleep super fast, but I stay asleep all night. I highly recommend it. And OP replies, I understand that she needs to relieve herself, so it's fine that she leaves. I'll look into melatonin though. I have a horrible time sleeping and staying awake, so if that's helpful, I'll try it. Unexposed post is by user NatAttack2015, titled, Am I the a-hole for wanting to elope after my parents cut my wedding budget in half? I'm recently engaged and I've started planning my wedding. I'm the only girl and my parents make good money, about 450k yearly. So they've always said they'd pay for my wedding when I decide to get married. I set my budget around 25k and started getting estimates on venue, photographer, videographer, etc. My dad said the budget was 40k, which I knew I'd be way below, so I wouldn't have to stress about DIYing the whole thing and enjoy the planning process. My mum has consistently pushed me to cut corners and have a cheaper wedding, and she said she'd give me a few thousand as a gift if I do. Note, my mum is notorious for backtracking on promises when it comes to money. My fiancé and I agree we'd rather have a nice put-together wedding than accept the gift. Might I restate, she backtracks on these decisions last minute too often for me to trust it. My mum has also gotten estimates of how much her friends paid for their daughter's weddings, all of which were over 25k, and agreed they could swing that financially. The kicker here is after those two estimates were thrown out, my parents backtracked and gave me a final wedding budget of 20k. My mum is also pushing me to use vendors that her friends used instead of me finding people that fit my style. She wants a southern barn wedding, I like more modern elegance. I wouldn't be so upset with them had the budget been 20k from the beginning, but it seems as if they pulled that number out of thin air. They also created this budget after my mum spent 3000 on my dress and veil, so I'm now left with 17 k Another issue I have is they have no problem buying baseball tickets for 200 bucks a piece and spending $100 plus on dinner multiple nights a week. They also just bought one of my younger brothers a car. He's in his junior year of college. 
My fiancé and I are long distance, and will be until we're married. And when I told my mum I'd rather elope than dance around a wedding budget and not be able to enjoy my day, she flipped. She's pretty much refusing to let me elope, and when I told her to plan the wedding herself because she's being so picky, she had a problem with that too. I feel as if there is no winning in this situation. Quite frankly, I just want to be married to the man that I love instead of arguing over wedding budget with my parents. Look, I'm on your side for this one. I don't care if it's controversial. She's being way too much. Your mum is obviously doing this all for attention. She loves the drama that she's causing. She loves that she continues to cut your budget down. That's very apparent through her actions. And then when you want to give her all responsibility for it, she doesn't want that either. She just wants attention. She doesn't want you to elope because then she doesn't get to continue the charade. I would say elope do it, don't look back, be happy. She's obviously got a history of screwing you over and backtracking on things that she promised or said she would do. There's no point wasting your time, especially with something like being married to your partner. There is just no point. I'm going with not the a-hole, please just elope. Now in the comments, the judgy witch says, everyone sucks here. Sorry, but you sound incredibly entitled whinging about your parents only giving you $20,000 for a single day event. That's an annual salary for some people. Your mum is being overly pushy, which I can imagine is really annoying. If she offered to pay for a wedding as a gift, then it should be yours to design. If you want to elope, then do it. Edit. Some people seem to be getting really annoyed with the judgement I've made. There is no denying the mum is an asshole for being so controlling and changing the budget, but I stand by my statement that OP sounds entitled, and that makes this a solid everyone sucks here for me, especially when they say they have an issue with parents spending a hundred bucks on a meal. And Arbitrary Cherie replies, While I understand and agree that this insanely expensive wedding is a clear example of entitlement, OP is not the a-hole in this situation. OP's parents gave them an original budget, one that was $15,000 above what they were planning on using. Then, after planning begun, the parents went back on their word and cut the budget in half. It doesn't matter if the original budget was 40 k or 4 k They still went back on a promise and are trying to control OP's wedding. Also, the fact that OP is perfectly fine just eloping rather than spending so much money on something they don't want proves not the a-hole even further. They'd be spending maybe a thousand bucks, rather than thousands. Visible Piano replies, I agree with everyone sucks here in this case, because OP is complaining about the money they spend elsewhere, as if that has any bearing on whether they should give her twenty or forty thousand dollars. It's clear OP's motivation is to be spiteful, and try to threaten the mum into behaving how she wants. It's a tricky one because it's OP's wedding, but it's the parents' money. So who gets a say in how it's done is up for negotiation. It could have been handled much better on both sides. I don't think it's to threaten the mum into behaving how OP wants, but more like to keep her to not be that pushy at all. After all, it's OP's wedding and not OP's mother's wedding. While I agree, as the ones giving her a budget, they have a bit to say about the cost of things, the ultimate decision should still be OP's to make. Like, why settle for a venue that OP doesn't like just to please the mum? Just from what OP described, it sounded like mum and dad were cutting the budget when OP didn't plan the details that mum and dad wanted. Mostly mum, though. She's not complaining so much as putting things into perspective. They have no problem blowing one to two thousand dollars a week, or spend that much on a car for one of her brothers, but they are balking at spending what is actually below average for an American wedding after having both agreed to a higher number and verifying that's what their peers have spent as comparison. Plus, mother is trying to dictate specifics when she's a known flake, and changing the deal after already spending money. This on top of not wanting the full budget and being willing to elope. Sorry, not the a-hole. I think OP is being quite reasonable here. Stoat King replies, She's pretty much refusing to let me elope. Lol, and how will she stop you? Not the a-hole at all. If you and your partner want to elope, then go for it. It's about the two of you and no one else. 
If other people are making the whole wedding thing into a nightmare of drama and bullcrap, then eloping sounds like a pretty good idea to me. She can stop you with guilt. How my mum stopped us from eloping was putting non-refundable deposits down for our wedding to vendors that she wanted without consulting us. It got so bad that most of the vendors did not even realise that it was my wedding. She would guilt my dad by saying this is what I always wanted. So my dad would fold and write the cheque, and then tell my now dear husband and I how if we eloped, how much money my dad would lose on those non-refundable deposits. <laughs> you're a better person than me, OP, because I would have said, damn, that sucks, and eloped anyway. Our next post is by user subshsubsubair, titled, Am I the a-hole for not wanting to help my pregnant cousin and her husband move to their new home? Samai, 21 male, cousin, 28 female, is currently five months pregnant with her first child. She and her husband currently live in an apartment, but will be moving into a larger home in a few weeks, as they're about to start a family of their own. My mother, 48 female, was speaking with my cousin earlier today. My cousin said she couldn't lift anything heavy because she's pregnant, and that her husband would need some help carrying heavier things, such as their dresser and bed. My mother volunteered me to help move their belongings into their new home. She didn't ask me if I would be okay, she just assumed I would be fine. Now don't get me wrong, my mother knew my schedule and made sure that there wouldn't be any time conflicts when I helped my cousin and her husband move, but it was bold of her to assume that I would be okay with helping them. To be honest, I'd much rather be at home and read, play some games, or learn something new online. I told my mother she should have asked me if I would have been okay helping my cousin move before confirming anything. I could have had some time to think about it. She told me to have some sympathy towards my cousin and help her out as she is pregnant. I told her I wasn't too keen on helping my cousin and her husband move. Now my mother is disappointed in me, and my father is too. Am I the a-hole, and would I be the a-hole if I don't give in and help my cousin and her husband? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. My cousin is pregnant and can't move heavy things. Her husband can't carry heavy things like their bed and dresser alone. I might be the a-hole for making him have to look for someone else to help him and possibly pay a lot of money in doing so. I'm family and could technically help him for free. I guess this really depends on how much you value your family and helping them out with your physical service, because I'm sure there's a lot of families out there that would say, you suck for not just sucking it up and going to help out, it's just one day that's all they need. But that's what we have moving companies for, that's what we have Airtasker for, we have a whole bunch of services that you don't need to volunteer someone else's time that doesn't want to do it, uh, and you'll pay someone else. That seems perfectly reasonable to me. If I had a family member that was reluctant and didn't want to help me out, I wouldn't get pissed off and say they're an asshole for not wanting to help me move. Especially if they're in OP's position here. I wouldn't be like, what? Your mum volunteered you and you don't want to do it? God, you're a selfish prick, aren't you? Yeah, you're the scum of the earth, aren't you, cousin? Something like that. I, th that seems like really irrational to me, but I can definitely see that being a real thing. I'm going to go not the a-hole for this one. The mother should have asked OP before signing him up for this job. Seems kind of stupid to me, and I would hope that these two people are rational actors and won't get pissed off at you for it. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, the judgy witch says, quote, now my mother is disappointed in me and my father is too. Not the a-hole. I'd be interested to know how much time your parents are volunteering to help them move in. I'm betting it's none, but they still get to feel like helpful people by offering up your free time. Yep, no one wants to be voluntold to do something they didn't sign up for. This kind of answer is so common on Reddit, and it makes sense because from a distance, sure, OP is an adult who technically doesn't have to do anything they don't want to. They would still be an a-hole, as part of life and common decency is helping your friends and family. If your only excuse is, I don't want to. Sure, the mum's kind of an asshole for volunteering them, but parents do that occasionally. From OP's age, they may not work full time, and the parents might. So it might be easier for OP. And let's be honest, 
who would you rather have helping you move, a 48-year-old woman or a 21-year-old guy? Minya Saw replies, It's really easy to be decent when volunteering other people's time. Like I said, it'd be easy to say the mum's an a-hole too. That doesn't mean OP isn't an a-hole. He still just wants to sit in his ass playing video games rather than helping his cousin for an afternoon. So absolutely everyone related to this pregnant woman is an asshole because none of them have volunteered to help? Including OP's mother, who you said only was kind of the a-hole. Your morals are jacked. Kikita987 replies, Honestly, everyone sucks here. I get that helping somebody move sucks, but you know what else sucks? Moving house alone because your friends and family are all busy, or simply decide they don't want to. Granted, your mum definitely should have run it by you before that, and cousin should have confirmed that it was okay with you at the earliest next chance. But saying that you simply don't want to is also a little selfish. Keep in mind, you're allowed to be selfish, but be prepared for some backlash or tension down the line. By the way, cousin isn't wrong about the lifting. You can lift some things at that stage, but how heavy at any given stage varies depending on underlying conditions. She could be on light bed rest for all you know. Six months prego and can't lift more than one kilo. If I go grocery shopping alone, then we're having Cheetos for dinner. But even if you don't have a useless cervix like I do, at five months pregnant, the body is very out of balance and not a you need your chakras fixed in a cleansing smoothie way, but physically you are lopsided. It's late into second trimester, hip and back pain is common, the hormone relaxin makes you prone to twisting ankles, belly is getting larger, some can't see their feet. You've put on weight, and now the weight itself isn't the problem. The problem is that it's all in the bump, so you're front heavy. Then, in addition to that, most people struggle with sleep, exhaustion, etc. I'm also moving houses, so pretty much the same situation as OP's cousin. I agree with your assessment of everyone sucks here, except cousin and husband, who just asked if someone could help them move the big items, which is a fair question. I would however like to add that I sure as hell hope OP doesn't ever need any help with anything from his cousin, because I know if I had an able-bodied relative who decided that they'd rather be gaming and watching YouTube than putting in two hours to help me do things I was physically unable to, then even 20 years later, I would not piss on them if they were on fire. OP isn't the only person in the world that can help them though. If his cousin and her husband need help, they can hire movers like everyone else. It's not OP's sole responsibility to help them. I think OP's mum is the a-hole for volunteering him without his consent, and the cousin and husband would be the a-hole for taking it out on OP. I don't know who everyone else is, but my family has moved houses five times, and never once hired movers. Well, not everybody has a family, and not everybody wants to go through the hassle of lifting. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Friendly reminder that I'm now posting daily on my second channel, Marky2. If you want to laugh at memes with me, link is down in the description below. On phone, you just click that little arrow underneath the video. I also want to say thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your names are currently floating down the screen here, and I love to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. If you see yourself on screen, I want you to give yourself a big pat on the back for being amazing as always, and thank you for supporting me again. I do hope that you guys have a good day, night, sleep, whatever it is you're up to, um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.